uh, for coming this afternoon. Uh, as you may be aware, Council is currently sitting. Uh, the Mayor originally was um, proposing to be involved, but due to quite significant commitments, as you'd be aware, a number of key issues before Council today, uh, he's agreed that um, uh, this media conference can proceed without him, and of course he will make his own statements in relation to uh, a number of the initiatives that are being announced. Um, at the outset, I just firstly want to um, uh, recognise the significant um, partnership that's been developed here uh, with the Gold Coast City Council, and I particularly uh, pay tribute to Mayor Ron Clark uh, for his proactive uh, approaches and initiatives which have been developed uh, in uh, consultation with the Queensland Police Service. Uh, I also want to start today by recognising that uh, there is a significant level of community concern uh, here on the Gold Coast, particularly about some of the more serious and violent incidents which have occurred. And I want to assure the people of the Gold Coast community uh, that I as Police Minister, uh, as a government, and indeed a Queensland Police Service, take these matters very seriously. And uh, I am confident uh, and comfortable uh, with the advice that I'm receiving uh, that the Queensland Police Service is devoting considerable time, effort and resources uh, to address uh, the concerns of the local community, and in particular, uh, targeting uh, the offenders uh, in some of these or these very serious uh, matters. And on that point, I just uh, note that of the three uh, recent deaths which have, have occurred, and particularly noting the tragic death uh, of Detective Senior Constable Damien Leading, uh, that the Queensland Police Service has very quickly uh, brought um, uh, alleged offenders um, before the justice system and charges have been laid. And I just note that. And in saying that, I want to also... Uh, recognise uh, and commend uh, local uniformed police officers, uh, local detectives and indeed the additional task force resolve detectives uh, who have in a very determined and focused way uh, been targeting uh, criminal activity on the coast and getting results uh, and the service can provide uh, more detail of that. There is an additional issue which I need to put to bed. There have been some assertions uh, through some sections of the media that there has been a budget cut uh, to the Gold Coast Police District. I want to quell that once and for all. Uh, the budget for the police districts here on the coast, in the southeast region, have increased. Uh, in fact, uh, in answer to a question on notice, which is now on the public record, uh, and we can provide that to you, the detail of how the budget for this region, which includes the three districts, has in fact increased from around $123 million in 2008-09 to around $140 $1 million in 2010-11. For the, for, the, for the umpteenth time, the budget for policing here on the Gold Coast has increased, and that needs to be put on the public record. Again, if I can uh, again um, reiterate my earlier praise for the, the work of the officers here. Uh, officers here on the Gold Coast suffered uh, a terrible tragedy with the loss uh, of uh, one of their colleagues. Um, no one should question their resolve, no one should question their determination uh, to bring uh, the offenders obviously of that particular crime but all of these serious crimes to justice and, uh, and I can't uh, but repeat uh, my praise, uh, my confidence in the leadership team here through Assistant Commissioner Paul Wilson uh, and his senior officers and all of the uniformed de and detectives here on the coast uh, for the work that they're doing. It's also important to note uh, that there have been significant increases to police resources here on the Gold Coast, particularly over the last couple of years. Uh, and I point to the establishment of a new police division uh, at Rabina uh, in 2009, uh, the establishment of the new uh, police district at Coomera. Uh, in the last allocation of 203 uh, police officers across the state, which was earlier this year, the Commissioner allocated 45 officers, or almost a quarter of the entire state allocation uh, to the southeast region, which includes the Gold Coast, Coomera and Logan districts. 22 of those directly into the Gold Coast, 14 directly uh, into the Coomera district, and of course uh, amongst those increases in detective numbers. In addition to that, uh, the Commissioner and his senior executive created an established task force resolve, uh, which will have 18 ultimately permanent additional positions, detective positions here on the Gold Coast. The Commissioner announced that initiative. Uh, those detectives have been sourced uh, principally from State Crime Operations Command and three from the region, uh, but he's given that commitment that they will become permanent positions over time uh, and will be additional detective positions. 
Again, I want to thank um, uh, Mayor Ron Clark and the Gold Coast City Council, who I've received advice have now approved uh, funding for one of the initiatives here today. Um, Gold Coast City Council have been very proactive in working with the Queensland Police Service uh, in recognising community concern and taking proactive steps in partnership uh, to put in place initiatives to address those concerns. And I'll outline uh, some of those details now. And the initiative which I'm outlining um, are uh, principally the uh, initiative regarding the helicopter and the extra police, which I'll announce uh, for the Blitz, uh, over and above existing resources. So, in summary, and I'll allow uh, Assistant Commissioner uh, Wilson and Deputy Commissioner Stewart to provide more detail, uh, there's a package of five initiatives which we're announcing today. Uh, firstly, a partnership with the Gold Coast City Council uh, to trial an Eye in the Sky helicopter for a period of six months. Uh, that um, helicopter will be funded through a half million dollar commitment from the Gold Coast City Council, a very significant uh, and generous commitment, and we do thank them sincerely for that. Uh, and police service, of course, will provide uh, the resources in terms of staffing and whatever equipment is required for that six-month trial. Uh, it will be a limited, obviously, trial of uh, a helicopter resource for the Queensland Police Service. At the end of that trial, uh, the Queensland Police Service, in conjunction with the Gold Coast City Council, will uh, conduct an evaluation and obviously from that point uh, uh, additional decisions uh, will need to be made uh, pending the outcome of that trial. So that's the first initiative. The second significant initiative which is being announced today is a, a blitz uh, of criminal and social antisocial activity here on the Gold Coast and that will be spearheaded by a 50 person, 50 police officer task force uh, uh, op on, under the code name of Operation Seymour. Uh, which will commence uh, as early as this Saturday. And it will be focused uh, on uh, criminal and antisocial activity across both the Gold Coast and Coomera districts. Uh, I want to stress that the resources which will be brought in, uh, those 50 officers, will be over and above uh, the existing resourcing here on the coast, which includes, uh, it's in addition to uh, the drink safe precinct activities and in addition to the task force resolve activities. Uh, so the first two initiatives are the uh, helicopter trial, uh, the uh, blitz uh, for an initial period of one month or for a period of one month uh, on criminal antisocial activity. The three other parts of the, the package include a reference uh, by the Attorney General to the Sentencing Advisory Council on uh, sentencing which the courts are imposing on uh, armed robbery offences. Uh, again, this is an issue which uh, the community has expressed uh, some concern and questions about. We want to be sure as a government uh, that uh, the courts uh, are applying appropriate sentences for these offences um, which meet both community and government expectations. The other uh, initiative uh, will be a program of security audits uh, and uh, means by which the Queensland Police Service and indeed uh, this will be in partnership with the Gold Coast City Council can work with uh, local small and medium sized business to enhance their security arrangements. Uh, this can be achieved through a number of means. Uh, we're looking at increasing uh, the availability of security uh, workshops for local businesses. We're going to be developing a web-based uh, information source and package for those small business owners who simply work seven days a week and won't have the time to go to a seminar. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, looking at other ways in which um, uh, support can be provided at the coalface uh, to those small businesses in terms of information about how they can make their businesses more secure for themselves and their employees. And the final initiative just relates to the Neighbourhood Watch Scheme. Already Queensland Police here on the Gold Coast and indeed in other parts of the state uh, target Neighbourhood Watch groups with uh, information. Uh, we're looking at initiatives where we can significantly enhance uh, and in a more timely fashion information about local crime issues etc. So that's uh, a brief summary of the initiatives that we're putting in place. I might uh, initially ask um, Deputy Commissioner Ian Stewart to say a few words and then Assistant Commissioner Paul Wilson. Thank you. Thank you Minister. Uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and thank you for being here today. Um, I'm just going to comment on uh, Operation Seymour. Um, as, as you all know there have been a series of quite violent and isolated incidents here on the coast over the last few months. Uh, as the Minister quite rightly said. That's put a dent in the confidence of the community here on the Gold Coast as to the safety of their community. Um, by 
doing what we normally do in these sorts of situations, that is that bringing in extra police from other areas, just as we do at Indy, just as we do for schoolies, as we do for uh, many other events and, and incidents around the state, we hope that we can show the community here on the Gold Coast and in, and in Coomera that we are taking their concerns very seriously and we will deal with them through a very targeted uh, and intelligence-led active and aggressive patrolling uh, operation that will occur over the next month starting this, this coming Saturday. Uh, we hope that that will also uh, have the effect of, of saying to people here on the coast who don't want to obey the rules, um, this isn't the place for you, go somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the Regional Police Commander, I'm certainly looking forward to the initiative of the helicopter for the eye in the sky. Certainly appreciate the initiative of the Gold Coast City Council in relation to that. My staff will staff that helicopter and it will be available at peak times and it will be intelligently driven. It will be available for crime, both for public order issues and also, very importantly, for traffic issues which are a concern to us on the M1. Further that, I'm looking forward to the new initiatives that we're going to roll out in relation to crime prevention with the Gold Coast City Council and in getting more people to come forward from the small and larger business that unfortunately had targeted of our armed robberies and our soft targets in recent times to hardening of their premises in relation to crime. We are this week, on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, having large seminars at the Southport and the uh, Corumban RSLs in relation to armed robbery. So we do invite any person that is available to come along to those. There are large numbers of people that have currently taken up the initiatives in relation to those two initiatives. Can you tell us, sorry, I was just going to ask this as the Commissioner, um, with regards to the eye in the sky, will that be a helicopter that can be used for, say, police pursuits, that sort of thing? Most certainly. It'll be one of the uh, issues that we would um, use it for. As you know, we have a restrictive policy and we encourage our police not to become involved in pursuits, but if they are life-threatening and serious incidences, there are a certain category that we do allow pursuits in, which is a very uh, strict control by our communication centres these days, and um, for a really serious major crime, um, that would be a, a tremendous valuable resource, as it has been used by your media helicopters recently in other matters that have assisted it, and I uh, look forward to the availability of that to assist us. The obvious question is if it's council funded, what happens if, this, if the pursuit crosses into the Brisbane area? No, the pursuit would still. It would uh, still be available for us, uh, from my uh, knowledge of it, because it um, would be of such a serious matter that we would allow that to continue. But I'm only talking about a very, very small percentage of, of major crime pursuits, because most of our pursuits uh, these days, we do have a policy now that uh, we would uh, restrict them unless it is for a very, very serious crime. What about other incidents? I mean, can it be used in the wider area, not, the, not just the Gold Coast? Well, at this point in time, it's been funded by the Gold Coast City Council, which is a large geographical area, and it's the area of concern where our spikes are and the surge of the extra police being brought in, and uh, that covers the entire Gold Coast Police District and the major populated area of the Coomera District. So basically, it's a geographical area from the New South Wales-Queensland border almost to Beanley and uh, back to the hinterland ranges behind the Gold Coast. So it is a big area. Uh, and there is a lot of activity. Uh, last weekend uh, in the Gold Coast District alone, we arrested 150 people on 160 charges. And you have been briefed this morning on all the different um, operations that did occur in the Gold Coast District. We had two major sporting events. We had our drink safe precinct. Uh, and there was a lot of activity of a lot of people coming to the Gold Coast. So it will be a, a very much an added advantage to us uh, during those busy periods, um, especially to look at the large movement of people. We do have in excess of seventy to 80,000 tourists travel to the Gold Coast each day, so it will be a great advantage to us. You, there, said, um, uh, you said that the, it's available in peak time. Does that mean that will that, you're referring to the time of day that it will be available? It will be available in peak, but a bit also intelligently driven. Um, and of course, as uh, our intelligence shows us, that uh, in peak times, busy times, Friday, um, Friday evening, Saturday, Saturday evening, um, when we refer to that word peak um, in traffic and other issues in society, um, it tends to be at the same time as our calls for service. We had well in excess of 600 
calls for service on Saturday alone in the South East Police Region. So um, those, when I refer to the word peak, it means those peak times in the day when policing response is at its foremost. But if something big happens, it'll be called? That's correct. It will be available to be called in. Um, and, of course, as you know, the helicopter services uh, uh, exist on the coast to do respond to emergencies for search and rescue and uh, other medical evacuations, and I would imagine that it will respond as we do have access to the state government shopper from Archerfield um, as well. So it, it will be available for us to be used on those. The protocols uh, have to be worked out, and it has to be a process that will be done in accordance with the tendering process um, through the Gold Coast City Council, but I'm looking forward to working with the Mayor's staff in setting up the protocols and having my staff um, use this wonderful facility. Minister, isn't it a bit embarrassing that the, um, that the Council's had to step up to the plate and fund this as opposed to the Government when there's been long-standing calls for, um, you know, for a, a police helicopter? Yeah, not at all. Um, I just want to, again, uh, commend and thank the Gold Coast City Council for its significant commitment. Um, the advice that I've received is that a helicopter, police helicopter, is not the highest priority, and I've acknowledged and said that on numerous occasions over the last couple of years. However, I've also acknowledged that a police helicopter, in my view, ultimately uh, will be a permanent part of the poli Queensland Police Service. Uh, the issue is the timing of that and choosing to uh, make that expenditure in, in preference to others. As with everything, there's a choice, and at this point, the major priority in terms of the air wing capacity uh, is to expand the fixed wing capacity of the service. However, we have a situation here where Mayor Ron Clark in particular uh, has been uh, vigorously pursuing this issue to the point where you've seen now he's prepared to put money on the table. Uh, that being the case, I think we would have been uh, criticised very heavily by the community. We did not take up this opportunity at least to conduct uh, a trial um, when that funding has been made available through the Council. So uh, we have cooperated through the police service with the Mayor. Uh, this will give us a very good opportunity to see the operational impacts uh, in the Queensland context. And obviously at the end of that trial, uh, the community expectation will be um, what are the results of the evaluation and what decisions from there government might make. Uh, and of course that will be uh, a matter for decision at that time. If it's a success though, would you guarantee that um, the government would continue to fund it as an ongoing um, initiative? The commitment at this stage is to engage um, positively uh, and proactively in this trial and to conduct a thorough evaluation. Um, any decisions about future funding um, cannot be made and will not be made until that evaluation takes place. Can I just add in terms of the availability of helicopters for the Queensland Police Service? Uh, Queensland Police Service already has access to Emergency Management Queensland helicopters. The government owns five helicopters through Emergency Management Queensland. Uh, the Police Service also has access to uh, the community provided helicopter service, uh, which obviously extends through uh, organisations such as CareFlight. Um, over the last couple of years, uh, I Happy to be corrected, but uh, the service would use um, 200 plus hours, 240 hours um, of those services, which have been regularly provided uh, for a number of years, principally in search and rescue type operations. Any idea when we'll see this get off the ground? When, when will the trial begin? Uh, again, that uh, well, obviously we're keen to commence this as quickly as possible, but council uh, will need to go through their procurement processes, so uh, it will be dictated uh, obviously by. Uh, councils need to go through appropriate procurement uh, to uh, to get a suitable supplier for the six-month trial. Will it be painted up as a police helicopter with all the delivery and all that sort of thing? Um, that level of detail will need to be determined in terms of what, uh, obviously, uh, uh, the private sector operators can provide. Um, so that would that's a matter which needs to be resolved. I can't uh, give any direct answer on that. Do you know about incorrect cameras at all? Would there be one of those on board? Uh, no, I can't answer that. It, that. Certainly these are issues which currently are available through Emergency Management Queensland helicopters. So in terms of search and rescue operations, uh, Emergency Management Queensland and indeed a number of the community providers already have that uh, infrared um, technology and indeed all the search capacity uh, at night time as well. Um, so again, the actual configuration uh, of the, the particular helicopter that uh, will be used is a matter for the procurement process. Uh, and also, of course, we need to uh, make sure that the workplace health and safety needs uh, of the officers who are flying this helicopter are appropriately addressed as well. 
and that uh, will obviously take place through negotiations with the unions as well. So apart from the staff, what else is the QBS going to um, put forward to help with this chop up? Um, well, look, I might, it might be useful for the Deputy Commissioner to provide a bit more detail on those sort of operational matters. No, thank you. Uh, the specifications for, the, uh, for the, air, the particular type of aircraft have not been yet uh, determined between us and the Council. The, the announcement has only been just made, uh, but we are grateful to the Council for this. What our contribution will be, uh, communications equipment, observation equipment and the officers that uh, are trained in that type of work. Um, uh, well, yes, the advice and the Deputy Commissioner and, and Assistant Commissioner can uh, detail that, uh, but uh, expected from this weekend. Where will those officers come from? Uh... Um, certainly at this stage uh, we're uh, going to ask four of the regions and one of the commands to provide staff for this. Uh, the final numbers, uh, obviously with five different areas uh, coming into it, there's about ten officers per area, um, Metro North, Metro South, North Coast Region and Southern Region. And these are traditionally the areas that we've called on uh, when, we've, when we've operated in, uh, during schoolies week and, and uh, at Christmas time uh, or New Year's down here, we've always asked them to contribute. And it's only a small proportion of each of those. Obviously there'll be other logistics, for instance, uh, vehicles uh, and other equipment that will have to come with those officers. But that, that will be done uh, using the same model as we previously have. And they'll be based down here for the full month? That's ex our intention is to, uh, in the main, most of them will actually be billeted down here. We will, we will arrange, uh, just as we've done in the past, uh, we will arrange for them to live down here. But there may be some who live at Logan, for instance, who work in Metro South and <coughs> Metro North that are able to drive, and we'll arrange that with... Uh, uh, through the necessary overtime arrangements for travel. Just back to the helicopter, is it a belief that this might be up and running in, in weeks, or are you talking longer than that? Look, um, uh, this is going to have to depend on only on the procurement process. Obviously, um, some discussions between Council and us on the final specifications, and that will include things like whether or not it has night vision, um, FLIR type uh, usage, um, and uh, then it's only a matter of how long it will take the council to put it through their particular process. So um, the sooner the better for us, but um, obviously we understand the, the time constraints on council. Minister, um, is, is this a special budget allocation that's made this possible? And can you tell us how much it's going to cost the whole initiative? Uh, th there's no special budget allocation. I mean, the um, issue oh, special, with... Sorry, the departmental allocation. Well, well, the Queensland Police Service will obviously need to allocate uh, a special uh, funding stream for this particular initiative, but that's a matter that uh, they will determine internally. You can't tell us roughly how much... Um, we have to rough, there are some rough figures, but to might look at the Deputy Commissioner. No, I'm sorry, are we talking about Seymour or are we talking well, about the helicopter? I guess, well, I guess both if you've got... Those. Oh, well, the, the, the helicopter will be, um, be staffed by uh, officers from the southeastern region, Paul's people. Um, we have a number of trained staff uh, in our water police who are, who are search and rescue experts. Um, we just have to check to make sure that they're also observation trained. Um, so that will be done through normal staffing arrangements and potentially a bit of overtime to backfill uh, while they're up in the air. Um, Operation Seymour, uh, yes, there will be a cost to that. Uh, we believe it'll be less than uh, around that two hundred to $250,000 mark uh, to pay for accommodation, overtime, that sort of thing. That won't be borne by the, by the region. That will be borne by uh, the central budget of the organisation. Given, given what's happened on the Gold Coast with, with what, what we've seen down here, do you, you think it's obviously a, a worthwhile investment? Look, I do, but um, again, and I'd bring you back to the issue, um, this, is a, this is really about uh, a confidence booster for the community down here. Um, the, the reality is, and uh, it's no use me standing here and talking statistics, because at the end of the day we know that crime is generally coming down. For instance, the armed robberies today are way less than they were even ten years ago, and we know that. Um, the rates are way down. But that doesn't matter. The people here have a perception of fear and we want to deal with that. So by providing uh, this, this uh, uh, blitz type operation, we hope that that will give people the understanding and confidence that uh, we are able to deal with uh, both the perception and the reality. Do you think it could be seen as just a band-aid solution? Uh, not at all. As I just said, the reality is that crime rates are, are, re, are coming down and we know that overall but there has been a spike and we have to deal with that and this is the way that we would normally do it just like when you have masses of people here for schoolies we always bolster the numbers that's exactly what we're going to do in this case. Are you saying that the perception out there about, about crime being up or 
being particularly bad is a, is a, is a misconception at the moment? No, I'm not saying it's a misconception because perception is reality to many people. Uh, there are people out there who are quite scared. Um, about the, particularly when we've had a number of violent instances down here, and the, whilst these have been isolated, unorganised uh, events, the, the reality is that even though we've caught the perpetrators and put them before the courts, um, that creates a, a, a climate of fear. And what we want to do, and what we need to do as an organisation, is to deal with that. Thanks, folks. Uh, unless there's any other questions, Minister? No, okay, no, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.